Hey everyone, welcome to Ben Garza Studios. So today we got two tips to help improve your drawing. Uh, we're going to look at some examples by Toulouse Lautrec and Cezanne. So let's not waste any time. Let's go draw. Alright, so now that the drawing is done, um, I just wanted to share with you kind of like what I was thinking working from the top down. Um, initially what I started with was the size of the cork, um, and I used the size of the cork, let's say this is one, I used the size of that cork to evaluate the distance down to where the bevel begins. So let's say that that was part two. Um, once I had these two established, I wanted to get to this point right here, right here, so that I could find the corner, the right-hand corner of the book. Um, and then that would give me a good indication from drawing the book in how far down I would have to work before I got to the label. Because the label, let's say that this was three, and now the label was going to give me a good idea that's uh, four of where the the cup, the top part of the cup is, right? Um, and I used this point right here as my fifth process to build. Um, yeah, so, I mean, it's a really simple process. You start from the top and work your way down. Now, um, a kind of side effect of this is that maybe you start from the top. If I would have drawn this bigger, things would have ended up maybe running off and they become a little bit cropped at the bottom. But that's that's really an interesting part of, uh, like I said, it's a side effect of working from the top down until you start to train your eye. And you can kind of, I could, I mean, for me, I can visualize where it's going to fit proportionally on the page. Um, not every time. So if you do mess that up or you feel like you did it incorrectly, you're not satisfied with it, just turn the page and do another one. I mean, this is kind of a, this is an, 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 a way to approach your drawings. Um, it's not a one step process. There's hundreds of ways to approach your drawing, but I really enjoy this. Um, when I learned about this, it really helped me kind of like figure out, okay, I'm looking at this really cool thing that I want to draw. Where do I start? right uh, it can be a little bit like oh man but then I, if I start here then now that's wrong that's wrong so this really gives you a good way of just kind of working through your drawing and just quickly getting through it um, it's also a really good way to um, just kind of attack a drawing and um, get right into the meat of it and not worry or stress about where you're gonna go wrong but more or less get a feel for the entire subject right um, okay so that was first one the next one we're going to talk about is uh multiple contour lines right so multiple contour lines and we'll look at some examples of this is where i'm not drawing let me get my charcoal pencil real quick so the idea is that i'm not drawing let's say for example the cork i'm not drawing the cork like this one contour line this is a single contour line example right Mm -hmm. around here and then this thing did something like that and so on and so on 
right see so the difference between these two is um, and we'll look at some examples of how Cezanne does this but the multiple contour lines you'll see is adding a bit of vibrancy and you saw how I worked that in the drawing really what I ended up doing was um, kind of utilizing it as a way to feel out the shape I mean for example here you can see multiple contour lines but really what I'm doing is I'm, I'm getting a feel for that circular motion in the cup but it also adds a lot of vibrancy and energy to your drawing you know I'm, I'm whipping these in here like that little strokes longer strokes breaking up the strokes um yeah and and you know even though these items are sitting still the energy of them the essence of them you can really add a lot you can say a lot by just kind of feeling out your motion through multiple contour lines and, and let's say you have something you've drawn like this and you want to go back i've kind of experimented with this to see if it works and i i think it does it still kind of conveys some sort of movement motion you can get away with that but you can see how immediately that is transformed it's no longer no longer stagnant um it's not really sitting there just kind of stuck on like a sticker um the other thing I did in this drawing was uh, breaking up my line. So the broken line, I have another video on YouTube that you can go and check that out on drawing tips. Um, and that is just because while I was looking at the light, how the light was coming in, where that was happening. But that I'll ex explain a lot more in the other video. Um, so yeah, I think I've said enough. Let's take a look at some examples now. And um, yeah, I'll show you how I use this um, on a daily basis. All right, so here's a drawing from Toulouse-Lautrec. Now, I highly recommend that you find books of your favorite artists. Try to find their drawings. I think it'll give you a really good idea into how they're constructing um, their paintings or the drawings. Um, if you can get copies of any of your favorite artists' drawings, um, I highly recommend so here's one from Toulouse-Lautrec um, that I attacked the same way. I started from the top down because I felt like this, if I could kind of get the head in the right position, then I could use the head to give me an idea of the bend in the back. And so I tried to do that. So let's say the head was like my first motion. The back, as far as the distance of the furthest of her, I guess a right shoulder back there, to the back of her head, I tried to use that as my second judging distance. And then from that again, I went over to the left to give me a good idea of how far up the underarm would come on the left arm. And again, I just began to build. When I got to this area, I, started, I really focused on the negative shape. And again, building the back, or the buttocks here using the back side of her right shoulder to kind of give me a good indication of how far out to go. And that just kind of helped me really get through it. Um, you know, these drawings that I do, if you follow my Instagram or TikTok, you'll see that I have a morning sketch routine. And I really try and use these drawings from masters like Lautrec to help me and give me an idea of understanding of if this is how Lautrec was drawing, if I can try and step in those shoes, then I can take that into my own drawings. Um, so that was just the first way there. Um, you can see I used multiple contour lines and you can see that Lautrec is using, you know, subtle multiple contour lines, maybe to add additional color here. Or, or you know a different darkness uh, underneath the left arm and the the back side of that breast there um, but overall I think I you know multiple lines here I tried to just convey that to get a sense like how is Lautrec building this how is he constructing that um, you can see the angle that it's at he's at it there's a lot of light which I really love to um, I, I spoke about that in the last uh, video I made of drawing tips. So if you want, you can check that out um, and you can see like where I discuss those things. So next, for an even further step into multiple contour lines, we're going to take a look at a drawing by Cezanne. Let's go check that out now. Alright, so I thought I would start with some Halloween skulls. Uh, seems pretty fitting for October and uh, yeah, I guess Cezanne, maybe this was uh, during his Halloween, but 
Regardless, let's take a look at some of the broken line, or well not broken line, the multiple contour line that Cezanne is using over the skull. And notice how that, it, it, it does add depth, right? We, we are noticing that this darkness is creating, you know, it's a sort of emphasis in this area, but also a bit of energy, a little bit of vibrancy there. Um, and if you can see there, like over the, over the um, eye cavity, again, we have multiple lines as he's feeling out these shapes. Uh, for example, right on the back side of the head, it looks like he began to draw it and then wanted to extend that. And so he began adding multiple contour lines, not erasing things, but just adding these multiple lines here. Um, this is a perfect example of where he takes that into his watercolor. And you see this a lot in his paintings, um, where that multiple line now becomes maybe multiple colors, right? Multiple lines, multiple colors, but there's a vibrancy here that's occurring between the background and the foreground of that skull. Um, let's see if he's going on. There's even more of this going on here, right? These sort of darker blue value against this lighter blue. It's still acting as a, a different contour line there, really feeling out the backside here. And you can see his pencil strokes right up in that area. Um, he does a really good job of creating a lot of movement and energy, capturing these, uh, capturing the skulls, but also allowing them to move. Um, and that was something that was part of the Cezanne exhibit of his drawings, is that he would create these drawings in a way that they weren't stagnant. And from what I've noticed, um, it's really just a lot of multiple contour lines. Um, so here's here's some drawings that I did of those. And um, I just tried to illustrate that, you know, I just trying to really pick up on that from Cezanne and ask myself, how can I incorporate this into my own drawings? And what I notice is that, yeah, they do, they do come to life. Um, the example I showed you with the book, if we drew the book, you know, with one line, one line, one line. It kind of sits still in space, it's frozen. Um, and if you're trying to add a little bit of movement, uh, a little bit of energy, a little bit of expression into your drawings, this is a really great way to do that. So, yeah, what more can I say? Um, really, thanks for checking out these two tips to help improve your drawing. I'm gonna try and keep this series going and drop them in uh, every now and then. If you have any questions or if you have any tips that you would like for me to uh, pick up or highlight or investigate, I'd really appreciate if you would leave that down in the comments. And I think that's kind of it. Yeah. So I'll catch you on the next one. All right. Take care.